Kyle, I have another beautiful game to show you today of Leela ID triple one four nine against Stockfish eight. Time control is forty moves per two minutes with two second increment uh, increments per move. So another classic from David Grosvenor. E four. We have c5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. This is the book, end of book here, given to both engines. Bishop d7 was the first choice by Stockfish here. That avoids the double pawns, clearly. Rook e1, knight f6, c3. So this is a very Roy Lopez style way of playing the position for d4, classic central construction. a6, the bishop is retained, bishop f1. Going back, not giving up. Bishop g4 pinning the knight. Is this annoying here? d4, c takes, c takes, and now d5. Now, not e5, but actually e takes d. Leela takes the decision to have an isolated queen's pawn here. Knight c3, we have e6. h3. Now, this is very interesting. Black gives up the light square bishop. Uh, maybe. Yeah, not liking bishop h5. There might be some forcing moves like g4 later. So this is given up. Is this at a long-term price? Queen takes f3 is played here. This tactically uh, looks to be working here because if knight takes, then there seems to be queen takes d5. So that's pinned against the king. So that's possible. So we see a, a counter pin, bishop b4, counter pinning against the rook. And actually the rook just moves protecting the d-pawn here now. On bishop d3, uh, the problem here is knight takes, that's the best move for black. And this ends up, this this interesting forcing line, ends up being better for black after queen d5. Uh, not knight takes d4, this is uh, just equal actually after this forcing sequence. So some fascinating stuff behind the scenes there. So rook d1, black castles and now knight takes d5 and this does set up a d5 pawn target which this bishop could be interested in it's interested in pawns on light squares that's its uh, uh, hobby <laughs> to munch pawns on light squares later perhaps uh, so g3 so bishop g2 coming up that looks very logical bishop e7 bishop g2 black counters on white's d pawn white protects that black is now on the defensive Knight e7 from Stockfish. Now, a very interesting rook left, rook d3, rook c8, and now h4, form pawn attack, h5, h6, rook e8, we have h5, and black plays rook c6 now. It's uncomfortable if h6, then there's bishop takes h6 here with the queen eyeing uh, f6, for example, simply like this. Uh, what else does black do here? So h6 just seems unpleasant. Uh, if um, queen b6 counter attacking on d4 bishop just drops back it doesn't matter about b2 here or a2 because this position taking out that h pawn is worth more than losing the queen side after g4 this is very dangerous for black this kind of scenario is extremely dangerous white's got a big advantage installing the dreaded form pawn here, form pawn. <laughs> so uh, rook c6, h6, form pawn installed anyway on h6. Bishop h3 and the bishop is enjoying the light squares here. Knight c8, rook c3, swapping off a pair of rooks. But not with rook takes c6. That would help black a little bit perhaps. We have actually rook c5 trying to get what appears to be a 3 to 2 pawn majority transition. So, looking right into end games, this is beautiful end to end style of play, which makes these games super instructive. Lila is not just a short termist tactical monster. She's looking at this, I believe, and thinking, hmm, a lot of end games are now winning with the 3 to 2 pawn majority. Black did take that, yep. Otherwise, d5 is under fire in any case it's difficult to defend d5 here so now d takes so you might think well hold on what about bishop takes here as you might expect bishop takes is not to be advised because uh there's things like rook b1 and uh these variations are just very unpleasant for black for example here rook takes hitting the knight 
and then there's nasties like rook d7 and then queen takes f6 after so this is just unpalatable uh, and neither this this doesn't help either this scenario with this c pawn being a monster here yeah it's just too strong and bishop d7 for example is strong as well it is a bishop d7 so we have uh um that's not that we went back too far there pardon me So after rook c5, yeah, the pawn shouldn't be taken. So bishop g5 is played. Bishop g5, is that curious or what? Bishop g5, white just attacks d5 again. And we have bishop takes e3. And now not taking uh, the bishop with the pawn, but rather rook takes d5. If taking the bishop with the pawn, actually it seems rook e5 might be sufficient for a moment clinging on with an even position so actually taking this pawn while it has got the chance guarantees the center pawn it's taking guarantees the three to two pawn majority for end games bishop takes king takes queen e7 there looks to be a very dangerous uh, infiltration with queen e1 threatens queen c3 not only defends e1 but threatens mate in one and invites queen e2 but that's harmless queen f8 is played if queen e2 king g1 this is just really great for white if black's really wanting this ending this is just horrible this ending because look rook d7 bishop g2 yeah the bishop's hobby is uh, used here of munching pawns on light squares and even this position in fact white can be more subtle about it with b4 uh, with the idea that um, for example, uh, you know, taking an end c6 if ever, if ever taking here. So knight takes, bishop takes with the prospect of c6 is huge. So uh, we have queen f8. And Lena really takes, it's like taking total authority on the position here. The form pawn is under fire. And so this move isn't just pretty centralizing, it protects h6. It keeps the dominance of the d file default control look at white's pieces they're really much better quality and we've got the form pawn as well what more could we want queen e7 we have bishop d7 the bishop's taking even more authority over this wretched knight so queen f6 and now white doesn't mind at all the end games after queen f4 and b2 is a kind of poison pawn here this is not taken in fact the queen's come off because here rook d2 uh, this position is hopeless uh, for black after rook b2 uh, because the form pawn gives a vital tempo here by the way because uh, if here then taking threatening the knight and also rook b8 mating so that's unpalatable so given that knight b5 nudge the knight and this is also winning because of c6 this end game here so the form pawn lending a real ha hand in these end games. So G takes here. Is this a liability? What's going to attack that there? It is just a fawn in black side. Bishop uh, rook d8. We have bishop e6 tactical. Not minding the bishop knight ending because it will be after b7. That's just hopeless. B7. Well, it's similar to the game actually after knight c6. So let's look at the game continuation. Knight c6. Rook takes. We have the rooks coming off anyway. Similar to the game. So three to two pawn majority, form pawn, two to three over here, but really black's in no position to create a pass pawn compared to white. We have king f8, b4, knight c6, a3. Uh, white is not interested in taking here, it's just an even king and pawn ending. So keeping authority of the pieces, king uh, e8, king e3 king e7 king d3 king e8 king c4 now preparing b5 basically king e7 b5 white the white king wants to drive itself in to black's position making a path with b5 knight d8 yeah if a takes we see that path being cleared check and then a4 this is just hopeless look at these two winning pass pawns so knight d8 is played here beautiful authoritative play b6 look at that bishop compared to the knight 
that is the meaning of authority. Every square the knight has is covered basically by the bishop. The knight's holding, having to hold b7, king e8. And now the king has the luxury of playing for the f6 square to go into the f6 square to greet its form pawn and win h7 for the form pawn to queen. King d7, king e5 with the big idea of king f6. King e7, but now Zugzwang scenario a4. <laughs> The king's going to come into f6 now if king d7. So there's a compromise move. If here, then that's obviously not helpful because of b7 queening. So we have a Zugzwang compromise move, fatally compromising, because it gives the bishop now scope for g8 to win h7. Uh, if f5, that's equally hopeless. For example, this, and the king comes in and just wins h7 eventually. The bishop is beautiful in end games quite often because it's a long range piece. It can control pass pawns from afar. The knight's just hopping around sometimes in end games, taking a lot of time to hop around the board. But the bishop loves end games sometimes. So f6, king d4, king d7, and now bishop g8. Yeah, the bishop slips in from that compromise. f6. So h7 is going. The game actually ended here. It doesn't matter about what seems to be the bishop being trapped. It's not. The bishop can freely take this and allow this kind of virtual trap. Because king d5, the bishop and the form pawn provide a good unit for keeping the king out to win the bishop that easily. And, and this king, meanwhile, will go to c7 and win b7. Example, king c7, king c8, another kind of... Uh, Zugzwang, if the king moves, then this bishop takes g6. So let's try g5. And then the bishop's out and about, a beautiful central square, totally winning position here. Just winning that pawn. And black's pawn is far too slow here against these two. This pawn is far too slow in this fictional scenario. Because here, there's h7 with check and getting another queen. So if black stops that, then just b8. Yeah, and black is faced with two queens against one. It's not even check here. So that's totally winning. White's going to checkmate the black king before anything else happens. So let's go to the game end position. So what did we get from this position, which I find instructive? Well, the form pawn is very good for end games. Very key uh, tempo gainers based on the back row mating there because of the form pawn. It sealed the fate of also the the h7 pawn. It, it meant, yeah, there's, there's some severe difficulties for black in that bishop against knight and game scenario. White's pieces had great authority uh, of the d file. The bishop against knight was just beautiful, the domination of, of the knight uh, in that end game. And the use of Zugzwang to create massive damage to black, yeah, to win uh, that pawn over there eventually. f6 being basically forced via Zugzwang. But yeah, the early foresight of the three to two pawn majority was also quite remarkable. A really nice positional game all round. I think we're really learning uh, beautiful chess from Lila at the moment. Comments, questions, like, shares appreciated. Thanks so much.